Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello, everybody. This week, our guest is Abraham Hyatt, who's here to talk about Digital Journalism Camp. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Good. Where can we find information about Digital Journalism Camp online, and where can we find you online? You can find me at abrahamhyatt.com. Pretty easy. And you can find the camp at journopdx.wordpress.com. Journopdx.wordpress.com. Yeah, yep. Where did the idea to do Digital Journalism Camp come from? Uh, it was an idea that I had um, about a year ago. And but I was not the only person who had been thinking about this. Mm -hmm. um, and at uh, bar camp uh, earlier this year, there was two sessions on journalism that people were uh, where there was just a lot of energy, there was a lot of interest um, in talking about um, digital media, future of journalism, particularly in Oregon. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons that I had sort of just never done anything with the ideas, I'd never thought that there really was enough interest in in that. And after bar camp, I realized that there was really a uh, an underlying um, drive that existed or passion that existed. So I just started talking to people um, and saying, if you if you if there was this kind of a camp, if there was this type of a conference, what what would you want there? What would you want to see? And people talked about um, hyperlocal news. They talked about revenue models. Um, and as that, um, as we sort of moved forward with some of this, you know, just brainstorming, um, it looked like that there would be a, a cohesive idea. Um, and that was where it started from. What's the date for journalism camp, and what's the date for the cutoff to register? Because I think that's Monday. The, the actually the the cutoff is the thirtieth. Okay. Uh, we have until the thirtieth, um, and then the conference is the first August first, uh, nine thirty to four, uh, and it's going to be at the Oregonian. Nine thirty to four. Yep. Okay. Nine thirty to four, and the Oregonian downtown, which is on. Uh, I don't know what street it's on. <laughs> it's thirteen twenty. Doctor Norm can do a fact finding yeah. internet mission for us. Uh, we completely blank. <laughs> it's the Oregonian. Just, you can look it up online. Yeah, just point yourself downtown. I'm sure it says the address on the journalism camp website, yes, right? It does. It's pretty clear. And uh, also, you can RSVP on upcoming. You can just look up digital journalism camp in Portland, and I think exactly. there's only one entry for it. There's only one entry. And there's a. Huge list of people. Yeah, signed we're up, up to, to we're over a hundred now, mm -hmm. um, and we're hoping to hit 150, and I think we will. Um, we've got a nice big. Um, the way it's broken up is we've got a nice, very large room to do some of the main sessions in, and then some smaller rooms for some of the smaller um, or more niche topics, and then a small room for hopefully some unconference format um, sessions. Uh, so kind of walk us through who it is that should be attending. What's your audience, uh, the people that you hope will come to it? I mean, obviously you want some journalists there, some bloggers. Who, who should be attending, and who does it look like is attending? Well, the people always ask, what, what do you mean by digital journalism? Mm -hmm. And the way I've always seen it is that it's sort of where – Print, broad, print, traditional print and broadcast, and then blogging, and then just sort of online innovation all kind of meet up. Um, and so it's people who fall into those different categories. Uh, and I think you're seeing that in the RSVP list is there's people from the big media markets in Seattle and Portland who are coming. There's bloggers who are coming. There's people from the tech community who are coming. There's students from the universities who are coming. Um, so anybody who sort of sees... Um, journalism not as being sort of these these old silos of newspapers or television and sees that there's this great overlap that's beginning to happen and is happening um, the people who want to be a part of that I think are the people who are showing up um, and it's like I said it's a pretty interesting mix so it should be you know open kind of everybody who's interested 
should be able to feel comfortable in that space. Yeah, there's one of the things I did when I first started planning this was I put a survey up on the website um, that just said, hey, tell tell me what you think. Tell us what you think that would be good and some very specific questions, but also just opened it up. And I've had about, it would be about a little over 50% of, of the people who've signed on uh, who, excuse me, who've RSVP'd have, have apparently um, done the survey as well. And I think because of that, I've been able to, I mean, that, that, those survey answers played a huge role in determining who is going to speak and what the topics were going to be. And so it goes, um, you know, from very specific how-to issues. Um, so for the people who are looking for information on how to, um, you know, do audio or, or video or um, hand these, you know, kind of hands-on ideas. To the other end of the range, when people who want to talk more about the big picture, when they want to talk about, you know, what are revenue models that are working right now in journalism, what are revenue models that are not? Mm-hmm. Um, we've got um, a, a really interesting session on storytelling. Um, we've got this uh, woman coming down from, uh, from uh, British Columbia who's going to talk about sort of these a very sort of big picture topic of telling stories in an online environment, um, whether no matter visual, audio, written, whatever it is. So I, I think it's pretty broad. I think that there's going to be a lot for people to find. Um, so I think Dr. Normal has something he can pull up for us in a moment. I want you to tell us about some of the speakers mm-hmm. and how they were chosen. And I'll just say before um, that Dr. Normal is going to be participating in one of the, or in a couple of the sessions, I think. Okay. So, you know, I'm not trying to, like, surprise everybody. Surprise! I'm going to have Abraham say something about Dr. Normal. Um, so we'll just get that one out of the way. So tell us about some of the people and some of the, just some of the, what what we can expect to find as we go through the day. We get there at 9.30 in the morning. What are we going to do? We're going to get the standard conference intro mm-hmm. out of the way. Talk a little bit about the sponsors. Um we're going to jump straight in. The very first one was was a topic that was very, very um, hot on the survey, which is hyperlocal news. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've got some really interesting guys uh, who are going to be talking about that. We've got Cornelius Swart, who's the <clears throat> editor uh, or the publisher of uh, the, the Sentinel up in North Portland. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a print product that has uh, tr- transitioned to an online product. I'm very, very um, focused on the... On so the let me ask a real quick question. By hyperlocal, we're not just talking about within Portland. We're talking about specific segments within the city or, yeah. or within whatever with geographical with, location you're in. Yeah, cultural, demographic, whatever it is that you're finding that, you know, and, and for some uh, publications that's or, or, or some... Um, um, media outlets are finding it literally is on a neighborhood by neighborhood basis. Okay. Um, so that's what he's found up there. Um, so he's got an interesting perspective. Um, um, uh, Aaron um, here. We got Ken, Ken, Ken Aaron, Aaron thanks. from Neighborhood from Notes. Neighborhood Notes. And he uh, has, is one of the real success stories here in Portland with um, again taking a um, Looking at news not from a how do we cover the entire city, how do we cover the entire state, how do we cover the legislature, to how do we cover our these individual neighborhoods, um, and he's had a lot of success doing that. And then um, third person is from uh, Justin. Um, I can't think of his last name. Justin Carter. Carter, thank you. From C A R D E R. From Seattle, um, and he's doing something uh, similar to Ken in terms of building a. Um, blogging platform, or it's not blogging, it's more about building a platform that's um, somebody who wants to um, have a hyper-local news site, sort of all the pieces are in place for them to kind of use this framework to um, create um, hyper-local news. Um, That's the first session. That's going to be pretty good. Um, The second session is going to be the... Uh, I think the storytelling is we're going to go into the second session. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Uh, it looks like uh, SEO for oh, journalists. SEO for journalists. We're going to do search engine optimization. Um, and we have two, um, um, somebody from Anvil Media, somebody from Hood River, um, both of them with backgrounds in um, SEO for specifically for journalists. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, um, search engine optimization is something, you know, that businesses are obviously been very keyed into for quite some time. Um, for journalism, it's a little bit harder because you have this constantly changing product online. Um, so there's some really unique difficulties and um, just opportunities that, that journalists have. Um, and it's not something that a lot of journalists think about. Mm -hmm. It's still seen in a lot of journalists' minds as something that's for the business side. It's something for businesses who want to worry about something like that. But in order to be able to create a sustainable revenue model, you've got to be able to drive traffic to your site. And one of the crucial ways of doing that is creating a, um, putting yourself in a position online that you're accessible and people can find you. So one of the big differences then between digital journalism and traditional journalism would be that as a digital journalist, you are everything. You have to be able to pull everything off at the same time instead of relying on a big corporation or a big, you know, room right. of people to help you. Is that one of the... I think that would be one of the, the hallmarks of, you know, if you're doing a startup. Mm -hmm. But I would say that you what's more important is as a digital journalist, you have a mindset that is aware of all that. Mm -hmm. And so you don't just file a story anymore. You have to see yourself as part of a larger... Um, a network of, of, you know, that's dealing with, you know, different online products and, you know, you know, what have you. Um, so I would say that's definitely what you're saying is true on, you know, small, you've got to be able to do everything yourself, but it's kind of the way that you're thinking too. Mm -hmm. What brought you, what made this so near and dear to you? What brought you into this field, into this arena? I, my background is in uh, daily journalism and in uh, weekly journalism, and I was before this I was the managing editor at Oregon Business Magazine up until uh, early this year. Um, it's, it's something that I have seen and watched from within sort of the confines of traditional journalism for quite some time, um, and it was something that really the, over this last year... Um, as there has been a lot of innovation and there's been a lot of people playing with these new ideas, you know, it's not just people talking about, oh, the newspapers are dying, but people are actually out there doing really interesting things. On the national level, you have nonprofits like ProPublica, which are, you know, is a, is a nonprofit um, investigative journalism um, company that uh, has gained a lot of attention for the work they've done. You have little, you know, startups here and there. You've got um, some of the. Uh, there's just a, a lot of energy online, and it and it's really, it's something I've just been very interested in. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it really is the. If you're gonna stay working in journalism. You're gonna be doing this, so, you know. And so, how did you make the decision with Journalism Camp to not just say, this is digital journalism? And it's, it is just strictly moving from what the traditional newspaper to be, would be doing to what they're doing now and how they're trying to broach it. What made you decide to open it up to uh, podcasting and blogging and, uh, you know, how to get video working, how to get audio working, um, storytelling? What, what made you want to open it up to all of that? Uh, it's just stuff that, the bit that you know, journalism has, is going to... Um, you know, will encompass so much more in the coming years. You know, I mean, you know, already when you go on the Oregonian, you know, the Oregon Live, you know, you don't expect to just see a story. You expect to see, you know, things along along with that. Um, whether they're there or not, there a lot of time you have that expectation of, hey, when I want news, I don't want just, a, you know, something written for me. Um, and, you know, you talk to journalists and a lot of people say like, wow, I'd really love to know how to do that, but I, I don't know how to do it. Um, and so... You know, I, what I would hope from this conference would be that people would, people from traditional newsrooms would be able to take some of this information that they're learning and go back to their newsrooms and say, hey, now I know how to podcast, you know, can we try to do something? You know, mm -hmm. I think that would be really cool. It would be really fun for me to have, uh, one of the things I heard at, at um, Bar Camp was bloggers saying, we really want to be taken more seriously as journalists, but we don't know the basics of that. You know, mm -hmm. we get the tech side. You know, that's easy for us. We need to know the other side. And so I'm really hoping that there'll be um, there's a session specifically for that of saying, hey, this is sort of the basic ABCs of journalism. This is what you should do for to have you know uh, sourcing that's credible. This is what you should do if you need to have a correction. You know, this is how to create you know um, you know a good journalism product. Um, even though you are not a journalist. And I think that that's the, the fallacy right there, is that we are all, 
becoming journal. You know, we are all journalists at this time. Citizen journalism. You know, it's it's there's just it's not a uh, you can't say oh traditional journalists and bloggers anymore. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just uh, really so so much overlap. What's that talk called? And when is it? Uh, Michelle Rafter, um, who's a local freelancer. Uh, that one is at I think it's from two to three, mm-hmm. um, and I think it's just called Journalism Basics. Uh, and she's got um, uh, just a real quick mini boot camp that she's going to run on on uh, how to just journalism basics. Okay. Yeah, very cool. What are some of the other highlights um, that would maybe be unexpected for this more mainstream, more traditional ba- focused? What, what are you know? What are some of the other things that are that are more? opening you said everything's now coming together mm-hmm. so if it were just traditional journalism what are some of the things that we wouldn't be seeing i'm talking in circles it's not making any sense what are some of the more <laughs> online media focused talks oh something that's just for um i don't think there are any no? i think that all of them incorporate some way elements of traditional and online and something new, mm-hmm. you know, is what I would hope. I, I guess that, um, you know, the, the, the last session of the day is the one on um, new revenue models. And I think that's going to be a really interesting one. Um, we've got three guys from very different backgrounds, all, all of who have a very interesting perspective on new revenue models in journalism right now. And they're going to be talking about um, print products. They're going to be talking about online products. They're going to be talking about um, essentially not what is the product, but how do we make money off Mm -hmm. this, you know? So no matter what it is, no matter what we're doing, how do you monetize these things? So they're going to be talking about, you know, paywalls, you know, people like the Wall Street Journal, you know, Mm -hmm. how do you have to pay to get the news? You talk about micropayments, you know, paying, you know, individually for news stories, they're going to talk about um, the freemium concept, which is you give away most of it for free, and then you have some some content that's just the real cream, you know, cream of the crop, and that's what you charge for. Um, and uh, that uh, is going to be a very interesting conversation. I think I don't, I have no idea where we're going to end up with, but I put it at the end of the day so that we could go over really long if we wanted to, because um, I think the Q and A on that section is just going to be. You have oh, sorry, an enormous amount of very intelligent people from the Pacific Northwest sitting in this room wanting to talk about, you know, how to make money at what they do, mm-hmm. at the, you know, how to sort of save our careers in some ways. Speaking of money, after the venue change, journalism camp became free. Yes. Yes. We, uh, because uh, we were able to hold it at the Oregonian, mm-hmm. um, we were able to have free tickets, so... That's uh, something to consider if you're thinking about going. Was that a goal? Was that something that when you realized you were able to present it free to the public? I mean, obviously, it's thanks to a lot of sponsors for allowing that to to happen. But was that something that you wanted that you were? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, you know, we know, I mean, how the, you know, the community in Portland for small conferences, you know, works, you know, where there's this great energy where people come together at these free conferences and exchange information and stuff like that. And it can't always be free. I mean, especially with the loss of cube space, you know, mm-hmm. we lost a, you know, a really important venue for that. Um, but so finding a place to be able to still do it for free is really cool. You know, it was really, really special. Um, and I'm, uh, yeah, uh, Mike Rogaway at the Oregonian, um, who writes uh, for their business section, mm-hmm. who uh, got the Silicon um, Forest blog. He was just so instrumental in helping set this up, and I have uh, nothing but thanks for him. <laughs> thank also you, Mike. Thank him. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> um, Dr. Normal, because you're the one that has the list. Uh, you don't have to, you know, tell us what all the talks are, but just the specific talks, not the unconference section. Could you run down for us what the talks are? Well, I think we hit a lot of the um, I think we main hit the room one. talks. Yeah. Um, we mentioned uh, all of that. There's uh, one thing we didn't mention in the main room is a 
a uh, very important uh, Creative Commons uh, talk oh. as well, which is you can't a big... Have a, you can't have a conference without a Creative Commons that's right. talk. <laughs> or, or a Creative Commons smackdown, maybe. <laughs> um, I, I, that might be an extension of uh, what we talked about at uh, Bar Camp, I think, uh, yeah. uh, last time. And... Um, <laughs> You know, special highlight is we're going to be talking about uh, video, online video and podcasting, audio technology. So you should figure out what you want to say about that. Yeah, I need to start working <laughs> on that. Uh, um, I think I'll start with uh, my mics are never working quite the way. And neither you will yours. Ho- hopefully what people get out of that, I think, is um, the online community just we just do you know you 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 plug in and you're you're willing to fail and you're willing to grow in front of the sus- subscribers or the audience and i think that you're that's like a, little macgyvers yeah i think that's a little you know different from maybe traditional journalism where you have editors and you have people constantly taking a look at what's about to be published or if you Although go live someone on would like TV. to come and do that for us we'd be totally yeah. willing to not pay you and have you do that <laughs> I, I think that's the that's the key right is um trying to find this um middle ground of 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 what it is to be a great journalist and also um, what us, you know, internet people bring to the table of, you know, being able to, to do things. How about, um, uh, do you think there will be any discussion about the impact of, you know, let's say it now, Twitter or, you know, the real-time feeds that seem to be cropping up Super um, in, the news, yeah, this, <laughs> in the news cycle? Yeah. Um, is there, is there any interest in that when you did the survey? There was actually a lot of interest in not having something on Twitter, um, <laughs> which is probably why, why understandable. Because we're talking about Twitter everywhere. That's why. Well, I, I mean, you know, these examples of stories, you know, you talk about hyper-local news and, and news breaks out in a location in the first place people are picking up the, the news feed is, is a place like Twitter. Well, the first thing I will say is that because, you know, I was, I've been working with people who throw events, you know, the professionals who do this for a living, and which I do not do. And I have no idea what I'm doing here. And I originally had the, this um, scheduled as a, like a 10 to like seven o'clock day. Mm-hmm. And all of them just said, you're absolutely insane. Because you know, after seven o'clock. four o'clock, people are going to be so burnt out, they're not going to do anything. So I ended up having to cut a bunch of sessions i had to cut one on serving um underserved and uh, people without computers in a digital age how Mm -hmm. you get them news um we had to cut that um there was a talk of having something to do with social media of not just having your typical social media oh people use twitter and break you know the news on twitter but Mm -hmm. trying to help you know traditional journalists understand um how to how to work with that? How to how to rethink how they do their work to incorporate that? Um, there, I never found a good enough idea for mm-hmm. how to do that. Um, but you know, I mean, as cheesy as it sounds, I mean, this really is an ongoing dialogue. You know, this is a continuing thing. I mean, there's. I would love to be able to take this and have workshops in the future um, where we look at ideas of poverty. You know, we look at you know. <clears throat> There was another one I wanted to do about politics, um, about these political bloggers who suddenly find themselves in sort of like, you know, news roles, accidental um, journalists. That's how Carrie um, uh, Chisholm at uh, Blue Oregon described it to me, Um, because I was talking about him doing this session. He was like, I'm I'm not a journalist. I just, you know, I I, I accidentally find myself, you know, doing that work sometimes. And I think there's a whole other fascinating you know session on that you know so this so you know whether we're talking about twitter or all these different things um they're they're crucial topics and they're not going to go away well the one thing maybe we should point out is that uh this is a hybrid uh conference so uh room three will have uh unconference sessions so if 
people did want to get together and talk about that they you have the unconference model where they can yeah. they have a room and they can go in and, and discuss that yeah it unfortunately has to be the smallest room but i'm glad that we still have the chance to to do that because i'm hoping um i know at least with some of these sessions the the you know the the next session it will be time to start the next session but that conversation is going to continue in one of the unconference rooms yeah. um so that's definitely available I think the biggest problem looking at the schedule for the conference is the same thing that you would run into anytime the conference is going to go well, and that's you've got so many good talks bumping yeah. up against each other that it's kind of a well, how do I yeah. decide where to go? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting. I mean, I know that, for instance, there's licensing issues that a lot of um, people who work pretty much online have expressed interest in, so that's why we went with the Creative Commons mm -hmm. talk. Um, I know a lot of traditional journalists are scratching their heads, looking at that, going, what does that have to do with me? Um, and I'm really hoping that they're going to walk out of that session going, you know, oh, wow, that has an enormous amount to do uh, for, for me. So, uh, As some bloggers have uh, pointed the uh, uh, ringing finger, at some, finger. Uh, yeah, at some uh, news outlets online, yeah. You're not talking about anyone specific. No, you no. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I'm just hypothetical. We don't know anyone who would have done that. Okay. All right. As long as, you know, that's a hypothetical yeah. conversation. Yeah. The, the other thing is what I like about um, the way it's presented on, on the website is up to this point, all of the... Um, sessions and i remember watching the live stream about the seattle post intelligencer early in the year um and a lot of those sessions seem to be so oriented against you know save journalism save mm -hmm. the newspaper business and and this big tug and pull uh, about that and um it seems like this is oriented a little bit down into the nuts and bolts of you know it's the 21st century now let's uh, um, you know let's discuss this and and not have this big uh, tug of war about we need to save newspapers versus um, you know bloggers or the unwashed masses or right. or vice versa you know. the world yeah yeah I, I mean that's a, a huge frustration of mine I mean you still see you know People like Ariana Huffington sits on these panels and says, well, you know, I think someday, you know, the future of journalism will be this. And it's like, no, I, this is crazy, you know. This is happening actually right now, you know. And I hate to sound like a you know, this booster is Pollyannish, like, you know, hey, you know, we're doing it. I mean, because we're not. There's a lot of people who are doing it really poorly and messing up, but there's a lot of people who are doing it well. And this sitting around and talking about the death of newspapers has got to stop at some point in time. Um... And there has, because there's really interesting information, there's really interesting things that people are doing right now. Um, and I hope that, uh, I think we're hitting some of those topics, just a few of them at least. Um, but yeah, I completely agree with you. It's, yeah. Okay, so before we move on to after hours, let's go ahead and hit a few of the basics again. It is. The first, August, August 1st, 1st, 9.30 to 4. 9.30 to 4. At the Oregonian. The Oregonian. You can with find that at us online. <laughs> <laughs> with, uh, with lunch. With lunch. Lunch. We're having um, a whole host of sandwiches and salads for lunch. Yeah. Uh, which will be pretty good. If you're vegan or vegetarian, you should probably tell somebody on upcoming. We've already addressed that. Okay. Yep. If you uh, want to go, you need to register on upcoming. Cause you that's need the... to register on upcoming. That is the... Uh, um, yeah, that's it. Okay, that's the RSVP list. Exactly. What's the? So you said you're expecting 150. Is mm -hmm. that the cutoff number? No, we max out at 200. Okay. Uh, the cutoff is 200. Uh, so, well, it'll be somewhere between 150 and 200. But yeah, the thir and the 30th is it. Uh, after the 30th, we're. That's it. After the 30th, you're shut down. Okay, so it's at journopdx.wordpress.com. Dot dot I yeah. got it right. You can find Abraham. Hyatt.com. Exactly. Abraham Hyatt on Twitter. Abraham Hyatt on Twitter. Anywhere else people should go? No. No? That's a good starting place. Okay. Uh, come back next week when we will have a lovely encore edition of Strange Love Live. We'll disclose what that is at a later time. Uh, stay tuned for After Hours. We'll be back soon. <laughs>